Welcome on this summary of Down to Earth. Now this whole edition talks about climate change, environmental consequences for the same. Vanuatu, Vanuatu Island is one of the classic examples we have covered about Vanuatu in a very uh, detailed manner in separate videos. So don't miss that out. Extremely important case study specifically for SIDS which is the small island developing countries. So uh, climate change has been affecting it one of the uh, in one, one of the the most vulnerable ways and the economy has seen nearly 50% damage in the GDP only because of climate change, global warming, uh, submergence of the land. There are various nations coming together to protect it and the main thing is in itself Vanatu contributes only 0.0018% of the total greenhouse gas emissions of the world but the consequences that Vanatu is facing is extremely high independently it's a carbon ne uh, negative country but the sea level rising in Vanatu and the nearby areas are twice as higher than the other parts of the world so definitely one of the major immediate concern that comes here now if we talk about india india has witnessed nearly thousand different uh, climatic disasters it could be floods cyclone heat waves uh, cold waves droughts in the various period of uh, 15 years from 1995 to uh, in the period of 25 years from 1995 to 2020 now the pattern for these uh, disasters which we call as hydrometeorological. Why? Because water as well as the uh, climatic cycles are involved in it. Along with these, these lead to vector borne diseases and therefore biological disasters also grow. Uh, now, if we focus on to the winters, we have seen extreme weather conditions. Uttar Pradesh has seen extreme weather events in 25 days and that is followed by Madhya Pradesh and Punjab. Pre-monsoon, we have seen extreme weather events specifically in the regions of Rajasthan and Assam. Unusually hot March and April months have been witnessed and the heat waves on 51 days have been recorded constantly in India. When it comes to monsoon, again, extreme events have been seen in Assam followed by Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra. The overall monsoon we could say was normal but the fluctuation between the deficit and the excess was extremely high and therefore there were regions which witnessed deficit on the other hand regions which witnessed extreme rainfall uh, the region of Maharashtra Ma Ma Marathwada is a classic example where there has been huge impact there are nearly eight districts uh, in the region which are rain fed and were drought prone. Now mo monsoon failures are leading to crop failures, leading to farmer suicide which has again become a problem. However, 2022 turned out to be a boon because there were plenty of rains and the, crowd, the crop coverage was extremely high. So this year turned out to be an exceptional but there were other states who witness, which witnessed deficit. For example, Bihar, Jharkhand, Haryana, Delhi and Punjab. Uh, now again, there are states who are waiving uh, the charges for electricity for the borewell, uh, which were not previously seen when there was a drought period. But the rising cases have made it important that some kind of subsidies and benefits must be percolated to the farmers. Similarly, the Nandit district. Now, uh, in the Nandit district, there are uh, increasing cases of farmer suicide. Now there was nearly 135 to 500% excess rainfall then expected in the months of June and July in Nandir. Now this destroyed the complete crops and uh, the seeds were sown. Uh, they, once they were sown they could not be re-sown and therefore a huge cost was to be borne to the common people. So what we also need to understand is to assess the loss and the damages be it the cyclone period be it the uh, flood or the drought episodes we need to understand what are the cases that need to be taken into account uh, how national disaster relief fund actually comes in how the central team works and through Manrega how jobs could be created uh, seed and fodder banks could be made available if there is a damage by the flood 
how disaster operations should run uh, uttarakhand floods in 2013 kerala floods in 2018 and 21 are some of the examples now during the kerala flood we have seen uh, that post disaster management needs to be enhanced uh, similar conditions were also witnessed for post disaster management during the cyclone fani which occurred in 2019 uh, we have seen similar requirements during the bhuj earthquake in 2001 the tsunami in 2004 and therefore uh, these have led us or given us an idea how uh, disaster management needs to be developed and strengthened so from the finance commission there is a corpus of fund which is entirely dedicated to it and allocated for the purpose of landslides flooding urban flooding uh, the prone areas the drought prone areas and compensation as required should be given to it now the existing me mechanism for assessment of the loss and damage is very very different because it is relief centric it does not build a process which gives you resilience so what is required is we need to understand the real cause of the problem once we require or understand the baseline we would identify the worst affected district for example when there were 2018 kerala floods we identified the most affected districts and once we have identified those uh, pakka housing could be done there there could be more methods of so slope inclination and uh, recharge of the rain water that could be done which could reduce the future flooding events in those districts of kerala however definitely all of these require hidden cause because even if once a disaster has occurred there has to be temporary displacement relief which has to be provided to the people it's not just india recently we have seen pakistan which has witnessed extreme events and flood conditions uh, the 30 year average flood condition uh, the highest 190% more than that was witnessed and this has affected nearly one third of the country islamabad has seen um, a new proposal from un general assembly uh, which highlighted how the loss and finance uh, the loss and damage finance could be tackled in the cop 27 uh, the next is it was not just again pakistan but similar scenes were also witnessed in nigeria uh, water flooding was seen in nigeria a huge number of death toll was also witnessed in the regions of uh, the west africa and this affected nearly 2 lakh homes in nigeria itself the next is uh, how vulnerable countries have been extremely affected and are at the hands of the developed nations the rich nations who have been uh, being the main source of um, greenhouse gas emissions and affecting these areas now if we talk about sindh and baluchistan region they have received 7 to 8 times normal rainfall in the month of august however uh, this has been historic now these extreme weather events it's not just again in the regions of uh, sindh or baluchistan we have also witnessed the similar events in the regions of bangladesh where a huge proportion of the land is inundating and being uh, getting vulnerable to regular floods uh, this has lead led to huge economic cost if we talk about the percentage share of losses uh this share of loss is extremely high in the developing and the uh, the developing nations in contrast to the developed nations now um, the real reason is the insurance coverage is poor again another important reason uh, reason is the infrastructure is weak bureaucracy administration loopholes uh, corruption within the system is again affecting the process now if we focus on the extreme weather events most of the extreme weather events have been witnessed in the regions of africa europe and west asia again a huge population in the region of asia pacific is affected and the deaths have been highly worse in the regions of asia europe uh, asia africa europe and uh, the pacific areas uh, the next important thing is among the cases of highest death we could see uh, so highest affected would be the regions of pakistan 
Ethiopia, Bangladesh and China. Highest number of deaths have been witnessed in Uganda. India is among the lead, uh, lead na uh, nations in this, followed by Pakistan and uh, South Africa. And this has been a report uh, focusing on the extreme weather events. Now next is attribution. Attribution talks about who would actually own the responsibility for historic pollution or who would be the historic polluters. So the effort of WWA which is the World Weather Attribution, a global initiative uh, which talks about climate change, weather events and has been given by uh, the United Nations uh, Climate Change Assessment Report talks about how the weather patterns worldwide have been changing what could be the relationship between global warming and the extreme weather events which are taking place uh, the major polluter nations have been identified as uk us european union japan russia australia and canada since 19 uh, till 1980s and they have led to <clears throat> significant loss and damage in the nearby areas now uh, because of these extreme weather events uh, we can see why they have occurred. So 71% of those uh, have been due to human factors in hand and 20% were because of no human involvement. Similarly, there have been numerous climate change linked weather events which were witnessed in 2022. Uh, numerous tropical cyclones in the regions of Madagascar, Mozambique and Malawi were seen. Uh, the extreme weather studies have been done on various regions for, for example atmosphere, the snow areas where we have seen cold spells, uh, the changes in the ecosystem where we have seen early cherry, cherry flowering in the regions of Kyoto and Japan, uh, the events of coral bleaching, heat waves, uh, the storms, increase in the <clears throat> wildfires, decrease in the river flow, uh, ocean damage, marine heat waves, uh, coral bleaching, increase in the amount of sunshine coming in. So what we can say is, Science has become definitely a boon for us but on the other side there is a bane as well because we have nearly uh, a huge proportion of the contribution of carbon dioxide emissions going into the atmosphere contributed through our scientific innovations and developments. Also the countries who have, who have been developed for example United States contribute to nearly 25% of the carbon dioxide emissions between 1870s to 2019 which is a significantly high proportion by just one of the nations uh, and therefore we need to have certain uh, background thoughts around it. COP27 uh, is being uh, the place for one of the major discussions regarding the loss and the damage because of climate related events be it heat waves, forest fires, wildfires, flood events. So it is linking the idea on the polluter pay principle. So who is the polluter and that polluter would have to pay for it and that owners would go to the countries which are actually carbon negative who are being at the hands of the developing nations being affected by the climate change worsely. Now, um, G77 which is at present chaired by Pakistan represents 80% of the world's population but their demand is to push back the developed nations uh, such as Switzerland and US and therefore there is a question uh, how to define the most vulnerable segment, the most vulnerable nations and the countries and the time to end this climate diplomacy needs to be resolved. There have been other solutions as well. For example, uh, Barbados Prime Minister has been talking about transforming the global financial architecture, which is known as Bridgetown Agenda. And it talks about reforming institutions like World Bank and IMF and having a long-term funding for the poor and the vulnerable nations. The debt for climate swap has been proposed for debt relief for climate investments. Similarly, Climate Action Network International has talked about a paper focusing on the future loss and damages uh, financial facilities could look for. Uh, if we talk about the timeline, Vanatu on behalf of the alliance of small island states was the first to demand insurance for loss and damage. In 24, COP10 uh, clubbed the discussions with the adop uh, adaptations. Uh, in 2005, it was COP11 in Bangladesh. 
which was on behalf of the LDCs, the less developing nations and talking for compensation. Similar efforts have been go going through the various COPs, COP 13, 15, 18 worked on the same way and then in COP21, there was a third pillar of climate action under Agenda 8 of Paris Agreement which was given. The text does not make developed nations legally liable to pay. So therefore, there was a role of climate diplomacy popping in. Also, we have seen that there was a review that was required for this Paris Agreement later on. And uh, the second review of the COP25 uh, in the COP25 was done for uh, the same but additional finances for the loss and dam damages were not included and in COP27 the loss and damage has been one of the major agendas for negotiation. In 2021 uh, they talked about the Glasgow dialogue for uh, discussion on loss and damage of the finances and G77 talking about a finance facility for loss and damage being headed by Pakistan. So those are some of the important developments that we have seen for uh, the climatic changes and its impact on the various countries and the nations. So this was a quick understanding of it. As I said, Vanatu is one of the important topics of discussion. We have talked about the, the, the developments in and around Vanatu and how it has been affected by climate change in a separate case study. Extremely important for your upcoming examination. Don't miss it by any chance. Wish you very good luck. If you have any questions, feel free to post those in the comment section. Thanks for joining in.